Welcome to Nuris I want to remind you that we have lunch outside and we want to also remind you that this Sunday we have our brunch. Today our Khatib is Mufti Gilgis from New York and please join us for more announcements at the end of the first era. We welcome you to Nuris once again. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. <coughs> Alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa salamun ala ibadi ladhin ustafa khususan ala sayyidi rusuli wa khatam al anbiya wa ala alihi al askiya wa ashabihi al atqiya amma ba'du fa'udhu billahi min al shaytan al rajim bismillahi al rahman al rahim wal asr inna al insan la fi khus illa al ladhina aman wa amal salihati wa tawasu bil haq wa tawasu bil sabr sadaq allah al azim my dear respected brothers and elders it's from the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has created us as human beings, as the best of creations of Allah. And after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this faith and He has given us this deen of Islam. And giving us the deen of Islam and giving us and raising us, sending us among the best nations that has ever come on the surface of this earth the Ummah and the nation of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us and has favored us by sending Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam into this world as a leader, as a guide, and as a role model. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent into this world with different tasks and different objectives and different responsibilities. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the best book which is the Qur'an which is the kalam of Allah it's the word of Allah it's the speech of Allah and he revealed it to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the living Qur'an he was the living Qur'an day and night outside and inside inside the masjid, outside the masjid inside the house, outside the house, everywhere. He was the living Qur'an. The wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha was asked, how was the characteristics of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? How was he as a person? How was he as a human being? And she replies, kana khuluqu wal Qur'an. His akhlaq and his characteristics and his daily life was the Qur'an. His life was according to the Qur'an. And the reason why he was sent into this world is to show humanity the road of success, the path to success. What is success and what is failure? What is true success and what is true failure? Why Allah Ta'ala has sent us into this world to recognize Allah, to recognize success, to recognize Jannah, to recognize Jahannam, to recognize our responsibilities and our objectives into, in this world. This is why Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent with great responsibilities. And we are also sent with great responsibilities. Allah Ta'ala asks us in the Quran that do you think you have been created in vain? Do you think we have created you for no reason? Useless? In vain? Absolutely no reason. Do you think we have just sent you just like that? To do whatever you want, to fulfill your desires, to act upon whatever you think is okay and right. <laughs> you think that you're not going to come back to us? Now, my dear brothers and elders, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us great responsibilities. Allah ta'ala has given us this iman, this faith. And with this faith comes responsibilities. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has rights and hukuk over him that we have to fulfill that we will be asked about, we are accountable for and we are responsible as a human being, as a Muslim. There are rights that we have on other people, our families, our society, our community. People have rights over us. We have rights over other people. And we are going to be asked about this. And the time is now to fulfill our responsibilities. Allah Ta'ala has given us this time and this time is now 
from the time a person comes into this world until he leaves, that's his time limit. And every single person has been given and allocated a different amount of time. Someone has more time, someone has less time. There's no guarantee and there's no certainty of how much time we have. Rasulullah fulfilled all of his responsibilities in 63 years of his life. In the last Hajj that he performed, he was able to ask the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, did I fulfill my responsibility? And the Sahaba radiallahu anhum replied, yes, you have done so. But dear brothers and elders, we are also responsible. We are also going to be held accountable. Did we worship Allah? Did we fulfill the rights of our wealth? Did we use our time properly? Did we do the things that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa showed us to do? Did we act upon the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? All of these things will be asked from us. My dear brothers and elders, this is why our deen and our faith and our Islam has given great importance on time. Time is valuable. Time is money like we say. Time is valuable and time will be accounted for. A person doesn't realize what time is until it's gone from, until it's taken away. A person will realize the value of the time once he loses it. And sometimes it's too late. It's good to realize before it's too late. Otherwise, when it's too late, then there's only regret and there's only remorse. On the day of Qiyamah, what will happen to those people who will regret wasting their time and not listening to the guidelines of Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Allah Ta'ala has mentioned this in the Qur'an, in detail, in different places. And it all ends with regret. It all ends with remorse. My dear brothers and elders, we are to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent us with great objectives. We are not here to fulfill our desires. We are not here to just sit down and relax and do what we like and act upon our desires and fulfill each and every one of them because this world is just not for that. Rasulullah says, Al dunya sijnul mu'min wa jannatul kafir. That the world is a prison for the believers. In prison, a person cannot do whatever he wants. He has to wake up on time, sleep on time, do certain things on time, eat on time. Everything has a schedule. Everything has a timetable. Certain things he wants to do, he can't do. Right? He's imprisoned. But for a disbeliever, a person who doesn't have faith, who doesn't have iman, it's jannah for that person. They can do whatever they want. No accountability, no responsibility. No acknowledgement of responsibility. They're here to fulfill all of their desires. But that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept here after. Akhirah is for the believers. Akhirah is in favor, the hereafter is in favor for the believers. That's why my dear brothers and elders, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the extent has taken qasam, has taken an oath on time. It wasn't necessary for Allah Ta'ala to take an oath. Whatever He says is already true. It's already certain. It's 100% the truth. Still Allah Ta'ala to show emphasis, to show the importance, takes qasam on time. Takes an oath on time, showing us the seriousness of time. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from all the advices that He has given, but in short sentences, in a few words, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa has mentioned a lot. He didn't have to speak much. Whatever he spoke was important. From one word, you can elaborate into pages, into volumes, into books. Hours and hours a person can speak. From a few words, from the advices of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa In a few sentences, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa has spoken about pretty much every single phase of a human being's life. Our life is in phases. Our life is in stages. A human being's life is not the same at all times. When he's first born, he's a child. She's a child. It's an infant. Then it grows up. Then it matures and becomes an adult. Childhood is a stage. It's a phase of life. Adulthood is another phase. A young adult is a stage of life. When this young adult grows up and matures, and ages, 
That's another stage of life. That's another phase of life. And pretty much Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has advised us to take advantage of all our phases of life. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says take ghanimat and take advantage of five things before five things happen to you in your life. These five things Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gives everyone, blesses it to everyone. Once we have it, we should take full advantage of it and use it before it's taken away. The first thing Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, use your youth, take advantage of the youth before you turn old. Then an elderly person can only regret and he'll say that I wish I was younger, I could have done this, I could have done that, I would have more energy. Then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, take care of your health, take care of your siha before it's taken away from you. The ni'mat and the blessing of health is only understood when a person is sick. And a simple toothache shows us the reality of a tooth and the importance of a tooth. A simple headache then tells us and teaches us what health is. Then Nabi Wasallam says, take care of your wealth before you turn poor. This wealth that we have been given by Allah as a trust, as an amana. It's not that we have put our hard efforts behind it and our sweat behind it and we have earned it so we can do whatever we want with it. No. Allah Ta'ala has blessed us with this wealth. It's a trust and He can take it away from us in a split second. Then when it's taken away, then we will say and we'll regret and we'll wish that we wish we had more. We wish we didn't waste it. We wish we used it in a better cause. We wish we used it for the sake of Allah, in the path of Allah, for good causes. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, take care of your life before death comes to you. Death is the most certain thing. And the time is the most uncertain thing. So my dear brothers and elders, taking these five advices into a thought and giving it a thought and giving it attention will make it easy to walk on the road of success, to walk towards our Akhirah, to walk towards our Jannah. My dear brothers and elders, time is valuable, it's an asset, and we are not going to realize until it's taken away. Otherwise time, people have difficulty in even defining time, but what is time? Time is a creation of Allah. Allah Ta'ala is absolved and free from time. Allah has given us this time. If you want to know the value of time, then we're going to have to ask that person who already has lost that time. That's why they say if you want to know the value of time and you want to know the value of a year, go ask the student who failed in school one year. He'll tell you the value of that one year. You want to know the value of a month? Go ask the mother who gave birth to a premature child. She'll give you the value of a month. You want to know the value of a day? Ask the person who missed his flight and his flight got rescheduled to tomorrow. He'll tell you the value of that one day. You want to know the value of a minute? Ask the person who just missed the train and the train left him. He can tell you the value of that one minute. You want to know the value of a second? Ask the person who just escaped death. He was about to get involved in a crash or something and he was saved. He can tell you the value of that second. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me an all of us the tawfiq to act upon whatever has been said. In short, we have one announcement that we are traveling in your community all the way from New York City. Alhamdulillah, we have a madrasa, an institution running from the year 2006 by the name of Darul Quran wa Sunnah. It's in Queens, in Woodside, Queens, New York. Running since 2006, we have about 150 students. These students come in their young ages, 9, 10 years old for the tahfiz of the Qur'an where they memorize the entire Qur'an, cover to cover, every single letter. They become a hafiz of the Qur'an, then they move on to the alim course where they learn the ulum al sharia Qur'an, hadith and fiqh. They study all the siha sitta from Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim and all the other books of hadith. And like this in seven years they graduate as alims and imams. After the seven years we also have the course, the proposed graduate level, the ifta course of two years where a student becomes a mufti. Like this, we have 150 students. Up until last year, we were operating in the Queens in various masajid, didn't have our own property. Alhamdulillah, Allah Ta'ala has blessed us with two properties, 60 miles north of New York, 
It's a whole boarding school, Christian boarding school that we purchased for $800,000, 32,000 square feet building, 40 plus bedrooms, and seven acres of land. As we speak, this madrasa is running. That boarding school is up and running. There are students boarding there, lodging there, eating there, and studying there. Two minutes away from that property, we bought a church for the community to turn that church into a masjid. It's a 17,000 square feet church, and it has a three-family house next door. This church we have purchased for $650,000. Both properties on cash, alhamdulillah, within the last year. We took money and we borrowed money from the generous donors around the country, and we have given them a time limit of one year to pay them back. This time is running, this is why we have uh, been traveling around the states, and we have come to you with this humble appeal that we have a loan of $500,000 to repay our donors within the time limit. That is why we are here in front of you. Inshallah, we'll be here. My companion is also here. We'll be here after the salah outside. Those brothers who can help us generously, it will be much appreciated. We take all forms of payment. Zakat is also applicable on students, so we also take zakat. Brothers can give their credit cards. We have Zell information, return envelopes. So whatever Allah Ta'ala gives you the tawfiq for, it will be much appreciated. May Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala accept it from all of us. Wa akhru da'wana alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> وصلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين هم خلاصة العرب العرباء وخير الخلائق بعد الأنبياء أما بعد فيا أيها الناس وحد الله فإن توحيد رأس الطاعات واتقوا الله فإن التقوى ملاك الحسنات وعليكم بالسنة فإن السنة تهدي للإطاع ومن أطاع الله ورسوله فقد رشد واهتدى وإياكم البدعة فإن البدعة تهدي للمعصية ومن يعصي الله ورسوله فقد ضل وغوى وعليكم بالصدق فإن الصدق ينجي والكذب يهلك وعليكم بالإحسان فإن الله يحب المحسنين 
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وقال ربكم ادعوني أستجب لكم إن الذين استكبرون عن عبادتي سيدخلون جهنم داخلين بارك الله لنا ولكم في القرآن عظيم ونفعنا وياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا من سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين واذل الشرك والمشركين اللهم انصر من صدينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم واخذل من خذ دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا تجعلنا منهم عباد الله رحمكم الله ان الله يأمر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وانهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروني اذكركم واشكوا لي ولا تكفرون